All right, guys, back again doing some more service work on the truck. Today we're going to be doing the uh, rear differential fluid change. And this is a uh, 2008 Ford F-250. It has the uh, Sterling 10.5 um, limited slip differential. And uh, here's uh, the fluid we're going to be using. All right, first to give me a little bit more access to the, uh, to the differential. I'm going to drop the spare tire, and if you don't know how to do that, I'll give you this little tool, and you take that attachment, just pop that in there like that, slip this in until it engages, you have to put a couple extensions on, and we're just going to rotate this off, and then you see the spare tire dropping underneath. Once you get enough slack in the cable under there, which I think I should have by now, I'm just going to climb under, pull out that whole mechanism. This is worth noting while I have the rear end of the truck jacked up. If you're not sure if you have a limited slip or an open differential, there's a couple ways you can find out. You could look at your door sticker and there's a code on there for the rear axle. In my case, it says 3L. The L will typically uh, specify limited slip, but you could look those codes up online to see what they mean and it'll tell you exactly the, uh, the axle that you have. Another way of checking, once you have the rear end jacked up like this, make sure that you have your uh, truck in neutral and parking brake off, and then we're gonna rotate the wheels. Now look at the one on the other side, over on the passenger side. As I rotate this clockwise, you see the other tires going in the same direction. I go counterclockwise and the same thing, going in the same direction. If it spins in the opposite direction, you have an open differential. When they spin together like this, you have a limited slip differential. So that's worth pointing out. Okay, for now, I'm just going to uh, loosen these bolts up, then I'll get a bucket underneath it. Now, I also should have mentioned, and I already did this, over here on this side is the fill-up. Before you even start this job, you want to make sure that you could get that fill-up bolt off. Because if you can't remove that, if it's too rusted in there or too seized up, that's going to be a big problem because if you drain this fluid, you're not going to be able to fill it back up. So yesterday I went under there and I put a 3 8 inch ratchet on there and it was seized up pretty bad. I put some, uh, I put some uh, liquid wrench on there to break it up and I got it loose and then I knew I would, was good to go. So definitely do that step beforehand. Make sure that you can get that, that drain plug off first or the fill up plug. This is a half half inch uh, socket for this particular model. So I'm going to get the rest of these bolts off. I'm going to switch to some air just to speed the process up. All right, now that I got the majority of the bolts off, these top two I'm just going to uh, leave a little loose. This one I'm barely going to squeak off because I don't want the whole lid to fall off. Actually, these I could probably take out. But we don't want the whole cover to fall in. We just want the oil to uh, seep out from the bottom. I'm going to start out trying to pry this open with some plastic putty knives. I want to go as least abrasive as possible. If that doesn't work, then I'll switch to uh, I'll switch to a screwdriver. But for now, let's see if I could pry this open with this plastic stuff. Right, that doesn't look like it's going to work. So we're going to have to switch to a screwdriver. So we just want to get right in here. You can see the old gasket seal. So I'm just going to give it a little tap. I am not having luck breaking this seal. So I'm going to give it a little squirt of some, uh, some liquid wrench. I got a smaller screwdriver with a little sharper edge. See if I can get that underneath. 
Man, I was kidding myself thinking I'd get this open with a plastic putty knife. Okay. There we go. There we go. We got some, we got some drippage. Mmm, yummy. Does that smell good? Okay, you can see it all coming out. See that all dripping out? Yeah, almost 100,000 miles. I'm pretty impressed. It's still a uh, decent color there. And we'll save this tag. This is another, this is something else that tells you what kind of a differential you have. Okay, all the bolts are off. I'm gonna get two hands on this thing now. All right, and there we go. All right, good for me to have a rag ready to put this somewhere. All right, there you have it. Now I'm going to clean this gasket up, all the old gasket material that's on here. Get this nice and clean. I'm going to let everything continue dripping out. Inspect some parts, which so far looks pretty good. All right, I got myself some rags, a whole roll of paper towels, and some brake clean. So, just want to get all this off and you know what I don't really want all this crap falling inside kind of protect everything here I mean, the whole idea is to keep the gears nice and clean right well, I scrape a little of this off and once I get the bulk of this off I'll uh, come back with a little uh, scruffy pad, like a Scotch-Brite pad. And now I'm just gonna uh, take this little Scotch-Brite pad and just get the rest of it. Just to get as much as I can off, you see? All that, all that old gray is coming off good. Okay, I'm just gonna spray a little brake clean. Probably a good idea to spray it on the rag first so it doesn't get in the, in the gears, but I think I got it pretty protected with this paper towel. And now I'm gonna work on the cover itself. Here, get all this, all this old oil out. gasket material and you see there's a little groove here and you can go through the entire groove dig that gasket out so this is going to take some work and then I'll take take the scruffy pad clean it all up break clean until that's nice and shiny okay so I got this mating surface surgically clean I just kept putting a little brake clean on a paper towel and wiping it until I saw that it was as clean as could be. Now let's just take a couple shots of the gears in here. Pretty cool, huh? I also took a paper towel and I uh, stuck my hand down in there to soak up some extra so it wouldn't keep dripping on the, uh, on the face. So I got as much oil as I could out. And I got the mating surface of the uh, of the cover cleaned up, and we're gonna go make the gasket on there now. Okay, gonna switch to some clean gloves again to keep everything as as I like to say as surgically clean as possible. And then we're gonna be applying the Gear Oil Formula Gasket Maker from Permatex.
I think you could use the gray or the black or even the blue. This one costs a little bit more. It's made for gear oil. Even shows you a picture of a uh, gearbox there. All right, we're gonna just try to make one continuous bead, getting it right in the groove all the way around. All right, so that looks pretty good now. The top bolt is the one that's going to get the tag, so I'm going to leave that out for now. I'm going to put a couple through just so I could really line this up without sliding everything around too much. All right, so one shot. Line that sucker up. There we go. Fell right into place. So we're going to finger tighten these. Let's get the rest of these bolts in. There's a little snugness. I'm going to stop right there. And we're going to do everything opposite. Jump around. There's a little snugness going on. I'll jump over it down here. It's squeezing out a little bit. That's good. There's a little resistance. I'll stop right there. Come over to this side. You can see this gasket being made really nice here now. It's coming out on this end too. Again, I'm not putting any torque on these yet. I'm not, doing, I'm not torquing anything yet. I'm just feeling them snug up. Okay. Now I'm not sure if you're supposed to put any torque on this or let it set up even more. So give me one minute if you want to read the directions on that RTV uh, package. Finger tighten bolts until material begins to squeeze around the flange. Allow to dry one hour then tighten to torque specifications. Allow 24 hours to fully cure before filling with fluids and returning to service. We are most definitely not doing that because this is Sunday afternoon already. And uh, I need the truck. So we're going to hope for the best. All right. So let's give it, uh, they say an hour. I'll give it 45 minutes and then we'll tighten them down to torque. Okay. It's been an hour. So I'm just going to uh, torque these down. We're going to uh, alternate going around. Now, I don't need any torque specs on these. They, uh, I could tell when they came out, they weren't, they weren't ridiculously tightened. So I'm just going to give them a good little snug. And again, we're just going to alternate a little bit. And you can see that's oozing out nice. Now if you're wondering why this is all wet, that's probably from when the fluid came out or the brake clean that I sprayed on it discolored it a little bit. But I'm going to clean that up really good when this is all done. So I can really, you know, check for leaks. Okay, now I've gone around the whole wheel. I'm going to start at the top again and now, now I'm going to give it a good pull. Again. Not like I'm rip, trying to rip the bolt off, but just good and snug. That's a good one. And really, how much torque can I be giving it with a little 3 8 inch ratchet? Play this one. Okay, these are all evenly torqued now. So, I'm going to wait, I guess, close to 24 hours before I put any fluid in this. So, I'll come back later. Okay, so we're back in the garage. This is the next day. It's the next night, so it's been well over 24 hours since I've uh, 
given the gasket time to seal up and you can see it down here. You can see the gray oozed out and expanded and it's a nice bead all the way around. Now to show you exactly where this fill up is, if we come over on the driver's side and we come underneath down here and you can see the fill hole right there. Just take a 3 8 inch ratchet and I had already made sure that I could get to this by putting a little PB blaster on it and loosening it up. There we go. Okay, this has a little magnet on it, and uh, I'm not going to clean that up. I'm going to take that to the workbench where there's some better light and show you the little shavings that are on it, which is normal. But basically, you just got to come up and squeeze it in the best you can. And it's going to be slow because I can't completely invert this. So the sound is about as yummy as the smell. Okay, what I'm gonna do now, I got a couple squirts in, because this is very important on the limited slip differential. We have to add our friction modifier. And I wanna make sure I don't spill any of that. So that's coming right into here. Because without this addition, your limited slip differential will not work properly and eventually, I believe, lead to failure. Now some of the other gear synthetics on the market, notably I think Royal Purple, they say you do not need the additive, but again, I just figure stick with what Ford recommends. And that is just par for the course with this gear oil. I'm going to continue on with this process. It takes three and a half quarts. I bought this apparatus. It's a transmission filler upper tube and it looked pretty cool because these are kind of tough to get up in that tight area and squeeze it in because everything wants to sit. You got to kind of squeeze it in, kind of makes a mess. So I think this will work pretty good. And I'll show you how this works here, which I think is really, really neat. That's how it's supposed to work. So that thread's on and then it seats. And then when you turn that mechanism, it seals it down. So as you're pouring it in, you could just shut off the flow. So I already set the hose up. So I'll just open it up. And now the idea is I could reach up, but I want to get one hand on the uh, filler so it doesn't pop out. Let's see how this works. Okay, you can see some fluid coming out. So I'm gonna give it a squeeze. I just wanna hold down here. Now you still gotta squeeze it in. The uh, oil is so thick, but maybe it's more gimmicky than anything else, but so far it seems to be working okay. Just wanted to take a quick little video of the filler cap here. You can see, uh, see there's a little bit of um, metal on there because this is magnetic and that's normal. So I'm just going to clean that up really good and then reinstall it. Okay, I got three quarts of fluid in from underneath there and uh, that little apparatus somewhat helped, but no matter what, it's a slow process. One thing I failed to mention, I had the rear end jacked up that whole time to... Uh, for ease of getting in there. I know the capacity they say takes about three and a half quarts. So I filled up with three and then I lowered the rear end of the truck because you wanna have it level to make sure that you get the proper uh, fill rate. So it's off the jack stands now and I'm just gonna uh, top it off until it starts spilling out. And then I know that it's uh, at its proper level. Okay, with the truck lowered to the ground now, and I know everything's level and I know I'm getting pretty close to, to the fill up. 
I'm just going to uh, take the squirt bottle, and this one's full. I bought a total of four quarts because I knew I would need more than three, and you can't buy half of one. Let's see. There you go. So I could see it leveling off right here. There's the uh, there's the filler cap all cleaned up. Might be a good idea to put some thread locker on here, like Loctite, maybe a red Loctite, but uh, I'm not a big fan of it. I like things to come off when I need them to come off. If anything, I'd probably put some Never Seize on here, but it's going to be, I'm going to put some lubricant on. Oh, here, you see how that's magnetic? There you go. Picks up all those shavings. All right, so that's good. A little extra isn't going to hurt anything. The theme of this job, have a lot of rags laying around. Yes, I will give a good, good tug to. Okay, I'm going to get a fresh rag, clean that up. Um, spray it down with a little brake clean so I could uh, check for leaks going forward. I got to show you one other thing while we're down here. This breather tube here, this vent breather tube. Let me come around this way. You see how that's cracked really bad? And it goes up, follow it around, and all the way to the back there. And it's just to let the differential breathe a little bit. So look at how loose this is, right? And it's a little bit rusted up there. So what I'm gonna do is just cut this a little bit short. Try to get a nice clean cut on there. And then I just stick that right back on, but I am gonna get a little wire brush and clean that up first. And then I'm gonna shove that right back on. So what this vent does, if any pressure builds up from uh, any kind of expansion and stuff like that in the uh, in the differential, this is a place for it to vent. And the reason it doesn't vent right here is because this kicks up a lot of water and you don't want to get any moisture into the axle. Have some crud, so it vents up and goes to the highest point that it can in the truck where it's unlikely to pick up any moisture. So what I'm going to do here, I just have a little drill set. I'm going to try to find, a, I just want to see that this is clear of any kind of crud. And be very careful not to drop that in there. Yeah, I feel it hitting the axle shaft. And I don't see any crud coming out on the threads of the uh, drill bit. Okay, there we go. Now that's a nice fit. That's a good fit, and that's a good idea to keep an eye on. Check that out every once in a while. So that's it. That's how to change the rear differential fluid on an F-250. This is, again, the uh, Sterling 10 and a half inch. Um, procedure's pretty the same for any differential. You just got to check your specs to see what kind of fluid it takes and what the capacity is. So as always, thanks for watching. If there's anything else that I missed, any other tips or tricks that you want to add, throw them down in the comment field below, and I will see you next time. Probably next video might be a front differential change, which should be very similar to this. Take care. As I spin it clockwise, I need to be in neutral. safety high protection and then there goes my light try to get that back up hopefully it works the way it's advertised yep that's a fail that was supposed to go on there maybe this bottle has a different cap and then we'll transfer everything yeah that's how it's supposed to work so that thread's on, and then it seats.
and then when you turn that mechanism, it seals it down. So as you're pouring it in, you could just shut off the flow. Unfortunately, it's not fitting on these bottles, so I gotta think about what I'm gonna do with that.